So we've seen all of the unconditional control flow that we're going to cover in this class. Now let's look at some conditional control flow. In this example, we have if statements, and that is going to translate into a bunch of new assembly instructions. So we've got a compare instruction, and we've got some jump not equal, jump less than or equal, jump greater than or equal. So we can tell just based on those names that they have to do with this equality check, the greater than check, and the less than check. So I'm going to call these JCC instructions for a family of instructions jump based on some conditional code, not equal, less than or equal, greater than or equal. Now it doesn't exactly help you out right now, but I just want to let you know that if you're taking this class on your way towards something like the reverse engineering classes, later on most reverse engineering tools or multi-tools, they will have a nicer control flow graph form of showing conditional control flow. So for instance, this jump not equal, jump not zero, it'll say, okay, if this jump is taken, it goes this way, and if not, it goes that way. If this jump is taken, it goes this way, and if not, it goes that way. So this is sort of the common control flow graph, and it makes it a lot easier to read rather than just looking at straight line assembly. So we're going to lump all of these JCC instructions, the jump if condition code is met. We'll just call this assembly instruction 14 for our purposes of counting assembly that you know. There's actually going to be many, many different instructions here, but I don't want to inflate the amount of counting in the class. So unlike the normal jump instruction, here, if and only if a condition is true, the jump is taken, and if the condition is false, then it'll proceed through to the next instruction. When you look at the Intel assembly manual, you'll actually see four full pages of conditional jump types. A bunch of them are just different names for the same thing, for instance, jump not equal is the same thing as jump not zero because they're both checking the zero flag and whether or not it's equal to zero. But this means we're going to have to do a little bit of a side quest to understand what this zero flag is. So thus far, we've only talked about Intel general purpose registers. Now we're going to introduce a new special purpose register, the R flags register. And so it says in the manual, in 64-bit mode, E flags is extended to 64 bits and called R flags. The upper 32 bits of R flags register is reserved. The lower 32 bits of R flags is E flags. All this is basically saying is, dear people who are learning x86-64, we've extended the register, but we're not actually using it for anything. So you can mostly just think of it as the E flags register that you already knew and loved from 32-bit assembly. And just to show this, this did extend based on the flags register that originally existed back in the 8086. It was extended for 32-bit. It was extended again for 64-bit, but as it says here, it's all zeros. So there's no actual purpose to the extra bits. So the R flags register holds many different single bit flags. And for right now, I'm only going to want you to focus on two of them. There's going to be a flag called the zero flag and if the result of some operation is zero, the zero flag will be set to one, not to zero. So zero flag is one if the result is zero. And then there's the sign flag. The sign flag is set to one if the most significant bit of the result of some operation is one. So the sign bit, we say that in signed values, the sign bit is the most significant bit because in the division of the two halves of you know, the 8-bit range, the 32-bit range, the 64-bit range. When you divide the two halves, the most significant bit is always one if it's a negative value that you're dealing with. So I'm going to cover all the other flags in some optional material, but these are the really big ones. These are the important things that you know you should know by heart. So here's our E flags, R flags, flags register, and here is what the Intel manual says about it. So in this class, we're mostly going to be focusing on these status flags. So S over here in this column for status flags. And like I just said, it is the sign flag and the zero flag, which are bits 7 and 6, which are the things I want you to know by heart. Here's the rest of the flags. Overflow flag, auxiliary carry flag, parity flag, carry flag. These matter for getting a true deep understanding of what exactly go is going on on the hardware, but in practice, I personally have never had to memorize how they're used for different jump conditional code assembly instructions. And just as an FYI, we will be returning to the R flags register in a future class to cover some additional flags that are instead system flags.
So we went ahead and added this one extra 64-bit register to our set of registers we've been looking at so far. So here's some examples from the manual of how exactly the conditional code checking is done for particular things. So I said jump zero or jump equal is jumping if and only if the zero flag is one. Jump not zero is if the zero flag is zero. Jump less than or equal is if the zero flag is one or the sign flag is not equal to the overflow flag. All right, so then you can see these other things, use the sign flag, overflow flag, carry flag, and so forth. So I said, I don't really want you to care about that because in practice, especially right now, when you're just you know, learning assembly, you can pretty much just you know, look at the assembly instruction, see the values that were computed beforehand. And if you don't have a sense of what's going to happen, whether it's gonna take the jump or not take the jump, you can always just you know, step in the debugger and see which way it goes. And later on, I'll be giving you the way that I look at the assembly code that allows me to basically just ignore what specific flags are checked for what specific conditional codes. Now within those conditional codes, here is sort of the translation of the mnemonics. If it's like a JA, a jump above, then above is an unsigned notion for values. So it means basically if you have FFFFFF and you're comparing it to zero, FFFF is above zero because it's unsigned. Whereas if it was signed and you were doing it with FFFF, that would be a negative value. And so that would not be greater than because it would actually be negative. Negative is not greater than zero. So above and below are the unsigned notions and greater than or less than are the signed notions. E is equal. Sometimes some disassemblers will use Z instead of E, so you should know that those two translate between each other. And N is not, so you could have jump above or you could have jump not above. And jump not above would be the same thing as jump below or equal. And if we rearrange those, boom, crystal bangle unlocked. The bangle below and above, not greater than, less than, or equal. I did the R flag side quest and all I got was this crystal bangle. Now before assembly instructions like JCC can actually jump or not jump, something needs to set those status flags in the R flags register. This is typically done with something like a compare assembly instruction test, which we'll, we'll, we will learn about later, or whatever instructions are already in line because things like add and subtract actually do have flag setting side effects. I just left that out of the descriptions of add and subtract earlier, and we'll come back to it when we cover the optional material about all the different flags that get set on different conditions. So we'll see compare now, and we'll see test later. Compare, the comparison is performed by subtracting the second operand from the first operand and then setting the status flags in the same manner as the sub instruction. So compare is actually a subtract instruction but the difference from the subtract instruction is that you might have two operands and the result goes back into the, op into the register that's on the left-hand side. In the case of compare, you do not store the result of the subtraction. You just set the flags and then you throw the result away. So you will very frequently see compare instructions immediately preceding things like jump conditional code instructions. So here's my little animated guide for why I can get away with not needing to care about what all the different status flags are checked in all the different four pages of assembly mnemonics. If you see something like compare dword pointer, so it's pulling a value out of memory at RSP plus four, it's comparing this to EAX and it's doing a jump not equal afterwards or a jump less than or equal or jump above equal, then the way that I typically think about these is first of all, that jump not equal is a not equal check, less than or equal is a signed less than or equal check, and above or equal is a signed greater than or equal check, uh, sorry, unsigned greater than or equal check, right? It would see greater than or equal if it was being signed, but you know, in terms of how we talk about these symbols, that's the greater than or equal check. So you start by translating the jump conditional code into some particular math operation, and then you just stick it in between these two things. So is the memory pointed to by RSP plus four not equal to EAX? If so, take the jump. Is the memory pointed to by RSP plus four less than or equal in a signed interpretation EAX? If so, jump. Is it greater than or equal in an unsigned notion? If so, jump. 
So this is basically how I get away with not caring about the particular of individual instructions. So compare, jump not equal, say, oh, not equal, is this not equal to that? Then jump. You always have to keep in mind the signedness and also a warning for later on when we learn at t syntax, the operands are actually backwards in at t syntax, so you can't just directly jam in the operation without flipping it, so that's kind of annoying. So now it's time for you to go ahead and step through the code and make sure you understand the interpretation of those conditional jump instructions.